good day guys and welcome back to my channel so in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to sew this palazzo a very white palazzo but it will be more like a corporate palazzo so you'll be needing about two and a half yard of fabric for this palazzo so the body measurement that we are going to be needing for the palazzo are the waist measurement the hip measurement the tie the waist to hip the crotch depth the waist to knee and the full length of the person that you're going to be sewing the palazzo for so you are going to fold your fabric the way that i'm folding it right now i folded it into two to fold out your fabric you will make sure that you have you must have divided your hip measurements by four and you will add like extra six inches to it so the first thing that we are going to be measuring is our waist to hip measurements before doing that we subtract one and a half inch for band or two inches for band then from there you will measure to your hip then you take the other vertical measurements that we are going to be using for the palazzo so the waist to hip that i'm using is 10 and i'll mark the 10 and to get your crotch depth you are going to divide your you are going to divide your hip by four so the hip that i'm using is 41 divided by four is ten and a half but because I'm sewing a palazzo it needs to be a bit free for the person so I will make it like eleven and half so I'll mark eleven and a half for the person reason why I'm doing it is because the palazzo is a high waisted palazzo the palazzo is not just low it is high waisted palazzo so it needs to be a bit free and fitted at the same time so i'll mark 11 and a half then i'll measure from my waist to my knee measurement the knee measurement ranges from 19 to 21 depending on the length of the person up to 43 44 but if you want it to be flowy it should be from 44 then i will mark my full measurements and i'll also add extra two inches for seam allowance my full measurement is 43 plus extra two inches i marked 45 so you are going to arrange your fabric this way so after that you go on and rule out the lines that you have marked so i'll go ahead and rule my lines i'll rule my allowance my full measurements no the waistline so when you are sewing, when you are cutting a trouser, the first measurement that you would take is your hip measurement. The reason why you take your hip measurement is that after taking your hip measurement, it will be very easy for you to derive other measurements. So her hip divided by 4 is 10.5. I hit divided by four is ten point five, but I'll make it. I'll mark ten point five. Then I'll add one inch for seam allowance, half inch on this side and half inch on the other side, and that will give me eleven and half. And I'll mark eleven and half. So the next thing that I will do is to. Connect my line from the point where I marked my hip measurements up to my waistline. 
I'll connect it up to my waistline. So I'll go ahead and mark. So the next measurement that I'm going to be taking is my curve. What I will use to cut my curve. You know, a trouser will always enter in between your laps in order to get a very nice fit. So I will use my tape rule in order to do in order to calculate this. You will place your tape rule on your hip measurement. But before that, I would like to measure my waist measurements. Then first of all, you mark your darts. You mark four inches for that. You mark your four inches for that. And from there, you will take your waist measurement. Remember, if you are taking your waist measurement, you will take it from the point where you marked your hip line. And this is the hip line. Then you extend it to the up. Then any measurement that you are taking for the waist will be from that line that you marked upwards. So from there, you will mark your darts. And from there also... From, you remove your two inches for band and you measure your dart depth. The depth of your dart will be five inches. You can make it six inches depending on how flat you want it to be around your waist. So you extend the line down to the five inches point. Then on the side of the dart, you measure half half inch on both side. This is what you will use to pick your darts, so that your darts give you a perfect fit. Then I will use a ruler and connect from the half inch point to the point where I have where I marked my five inch for my dart depth. So we have gotten our darts. The next thing that we are going to do is to take our waist measurements please please that are very very important for trousers then we'll take our waist measurements you will divide the waist by four her waist is 29 is 30 sorry 30 plus one inch is 30 divided by four is seven and a half plus one inch eight and a half plus one inch for that You will divide your waist by four, that is seven and a half. You will add another one inch for that, eight and a half, and another one inch for seam allowance, nine and a half. So that is what I that is why I marked nine and a half. And from that point where you mark the nine and a half, you will connect to your hip line. Then in order to get our crotch curve, the curve that we use for our crotch, we are going to place our tape rule from the hip point. Remember, we mark 10 and half. Our hip is 10, divided by 4 is 10 and half. Before we added another 1 inch for seam allowance. So that 10 and half, you go ahead and divide it by 4 again. So if you divide 10 and half by 4, you'll be getting around 2.6. You'll be getting around 2.6 so i'll go ahead and use that 2.6 as my crotch curve if your hip is 40 and you divide it by 4 you will have 10 if you divide that 10 by 4 again you will have 2.5 so anything you get is what you mark from that point as your crotch curve so i got 2.6 for this one so that is what I'll use for my crotch curve. So I've marked my 2.6 from the point where I marked my hip line and, and I'll curve. You will curve from your hip line down to the place where you marked the 2.6 or 2 points, whatever you got for your hip. So this is how your curve will look like. 
and the next thing you will do is to take your tie measurement but before you take your tie measurement you place your tape root the way i did now from the point where you marked your crotch curve to your hip point then you determine the middle point everything that i have there is 14 and the middle point is 7 so i marked that 7 that is where i will rule my line from this line will divide my trouser into two equal parts. So the help of this is that it will make other measurements, taking other measurements easy for you. So in order to get my tie measurements, I will measure 3 inches from my hip down. This is your tie and to get what to be fitted for you, you will take your tie measurement 3 inches below your crotch line. So my tie measurement is around, um, is 20, is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 6. I'll measure my 3 inches first. Then, before marking my time measurement, 24 divided by 2 is, is 12. And the middle of the 2, if you divide the 12 by 2, it will have, you will have 6. So, you place 6 at the middle line. This is 6. If you divide 12 by 2, you will have 6. So you will place 6 on the line. Then you add another 1 inch. Because 24 divided by 2. Remember the trouser, we have 2 pieces. Two, 4 pieces. 2 for the front size. 2, two for the front size and 2 for the back size. So the 24 divided by 2 is 12. Plus 1 inch for same allowance, 13. So 13 divided by 2 is 6 and a half. That is why I placed 6 and a half on the middle line. So we see the points where I marked my 13 at. Then I'll go ahead and connect from my crotch line to the points where I marked and from my hip line to the points where I marked. Then for a palazzo, it is very, very easy. After getting, getting your side measurements, you will just draw a straight line down to the full length of your palazzo because it will be free the palazzo that we are sewing will only be fitted at the tie area at the hip area then the rest of the palazzo will be very very free so you just draw a straight line down to the full length of your palazzo you are free to determine the wideness of the palazzo if you want. Then after drawing your straight line, the next thing is to go ahead and cut. This is all for palazzo. You don't have to take your, your knee measurements, your ankle and all that. You just make a very free line, straight line down to your full length measurement. So I'll go ahead and cut what I have there. Remember to notch your dart it is very very important to notch your dart so i've cut out my front pieces for my trousers this is my front pieces for the trouser it is on full two i have two pieces here one for the right side and one for the left side so for a normal trouser you will just be taking what you measured on the trouser but for this palazzo, it is just free. So for the back part, we'll fold our fabric into two again. Remember that it is four pieces, two for the front and two for the back. So we are finished cutting the front part. We are cutting the back part now. So you place your front part to the back part. The only difference between the front part and the back part is just a few manipulation or few allowances that you have to add i will show you how to add those things now in order to achieve a perfect fixed trouser 
So I've placed my trouser this way. At the crotch curve, I'll come down by half inch and from there I'll add extra two inches. Remember the curve that you made for your crotch? You add extra two inches from there. That is the crotch curve will be longer than the front crotch curve. So for the back part, remember that for a female, our back is a bit deep. Our waist is a bit deep at the back. So at the waistline of this trouser, you will come in by two inches. At the middle back, let's just call it center back, you will come in by two inches. Reason why we, we are coming in by two inches is that our back is a bit deep so that the trouser will fit in at that deep part of our waist. Then that two inches that you removed from the center from the center back, you add it to the side back, to the hip side. As you can see, I added the two inches to the hip side. Then I'll add I'll come up by two inches at the center back as well. I'll come up by two inches depending on how big the uh, the bum of the person is for a slim person you can use one inch then from that point where you marked your two inches upwards you will connect down to the point where you added two inches at the hip side let me repeat you will subtract two inches from the center back and add it to the hip side because our hip is a bit curvy so i'll add two inches to the hip side I'll transfer the two inches to the hip side then at the knee side I will add just one and a half and one inch at the down part so I will use my ruler and connect the two inches from the waist down to the hip and from the hip I will connect to the one and a half inch I measured on the knee then I'll mark a straight line down. So that is it for for this, the hip side of the trouser. Then at the other side of the trouser, at the center part of the back piece, you will not add anything to there. But remember that you extended your crotch with two inches so what we need to do is to extend our crotch line to meet the points where we marked two inches and from that point you extend the curve to the waist from the waist you extend the curve to meet where you marked it where you extend it. as you can see the crotch curve for the back now is longer than the front you are doing this in order to accommodate our bone so my zip for this trouser will be at the back so what I'll do is to add my two inches or one and a half inch zipper allowance I'll add my one and a half inch zipper allowance down to my hip line So I will, you will see how I marked my zipper allowance. So this is my zipper allowance now. The zipper will be an invisible zip. This is how I marked my zipper allowance at the back. So that's for our zip. And for the, in order to blend the crotch side, we will just curve it down to the knee part of the trouser. This is how we blend the back parts out. So every other thing on the trouser, on the center back of the trouser will be the same as the front side, just at the crotch side. That is where the difference starts from. So I will go ahead and cut out my back piece for my trouser. You follow the lines you have marked and cut out your back pieces you 
you cut your crotch side the place you extended your crotch and from there you will cut up to the point where you have your zipper allowance then you will follow the line that you made for your zipper allowance you will come up to your waist and cut out your waistline and you also cut your zip side so 